Serving for success in association with ANZ. The biggest hurdle for most professional athletes is in between the ears. A lot of anxiety sometimes, especially right before a Grand Slam, you know, you want to get off to a good start and whatnot. I think the mental strength is one thing that sort of gets overlooked in a lot of ways and, you know, it's only one or two points quite often that can really turn a match. Mentally and emotionally, um, it's as draining as it is physically. I see tennis as a game of chess. I mean, you have to figure out the plan to defeat your opponent. There are lots of good players out there, but it's only the tough that survive. Life on the tennis tour is demanding, but it doesn't just take its toll on the body. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on a tennis player because it is an individual sport. For me, tennis is the toughest sport. Tennis players are mostly very big egoists, you know, because we're always alone. Just being able to talk through their fears or their worries or their issues or problems, that's very important and often that's the role that a psychologist or someone like myself can play. The bottom line is getting into their mind that, you know, you've got to win somehow, you've got to find a way. You know, athletes just as a whole do things to get themselves in the right mindset. I always eat the same thing for every match. I eat a peanut butter and honey sandwich. I, I, I have just one routine. I don't shave in a tournament. I'm a great believer in sort of visualizing the match, you know, where you, who you're going to be playing, the court you're going to be playing. It. Visualize yourself winning, shaking hands at the end when you go to bed at night. To be successful, opponents must engage in a battle of wits that goes beyond their physical training. You've got to be able to handle the positives and the negatives of what happens out there over five sets. The worst thing that you could do on a tennis court is exhibit negative body language, because what does that give to your opponent? That gives them hope. So someone like Maria Sharapova on the women's side, Rafa Nadal on the men's side, A pluses, you get the feeling that as soon as one point is ended, immediately that's erased. You know, it's keeping that positive attitude and keeping very clear about what you want to do. When you played someone like Bjorn Borg, as an example, or Jimmy Connors, if you were lucky enough to get ahead of them in the match and you would look across the net at them, they would give you a look to say, and it wasn't arrogance, it was just, you've still got to win the next point. You've still got to beat me. It's unnerving, it, it gets to you after a while. As an opponent, you want to see that meltdown. Uh, it's usually about losing. <laughs> when, you, when a player starts losing, they usually start uh, getting getting upset. Oh, wow. A referee makes a huge mistake, or uh, I get angry at myself because I don't uh, play the way I want to play. Um, you, you try to minimize that, but uh, once in a while it happens. Until athletes take responsibility for the score and what's going on in a match, they're not going to improve. Showing a lot of energy and discipline and just focusing on your game will get you through those tough moments. The champions are something more than the others. It's this little thing that you cannot explain, but that makes the difference in the most difficult moment of the match. Serving for success in association with ANZ.